Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Huh? Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. How do you determine if black magic is affecting a person or it's their nafs, lower commanding self, or whispers by shaitan? How do we recover, recover from these? How do we distinguish between black magic, bad energy or sins? Yeah, I wouldn't try to… Yeah, let's go back there. We don't focus on the black magic. So we view it all as just a test. And that's why we said in, in muhasaba and accounting of ourselves, you know if you're sinning and then you know the difficulty is going to come, that's why the talk tonight. Now you think just things are randomly you, nothing comes random. So then everything is always the focus is to build my energy. I make my istighfar, do the salawats, recite the awrads on the app, do the du'as on the app go for the Jummah, pray the Jummah at home. But the intention of the day of Jummah has an immense power and dressing and protection. You do it alone and alhamdulillah if that's all that's around you, then you recite the day of Jummah that Ya Rabbi I'm intending to be dressed by the lights of Jummah and that this blessing to reach to me. So everything is about focusing on the positive, we don't try to focus on is there magic on me and then go into the negative understanding and then before you know it you're entering into a cultural understanding where some cultures think everything is black magic and they begin to engage in it. So that's the danger, you think it's magic so then you go to a magician to do more magic and then they say, oh wow that was magic then they go to another magician to do more magic and before you know it. Everybody like is like a Harry Potter, they're throwing spells at each other. So this is a danger, just focus on the good, run towards Allah and Allah is the greatest of those to protect His servants, so alhamdulillah. As salaamu shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa I get a lot of waswas, please help, I have to fight them a lot while I sit to concentrate on my meditation. What can I do regularly and what should I not do to keep them away? I get a lot of waswas. So when I sit for meditation it causes a lot of difficulty. Yes, this is the whole concept of this creation that as soon as we try to do something good, shaitan is not happy and evilness is, is not happy and that's the job of what Allah made for them. They're not supposed to be happy, they're supposed to try to attack the servant and this is a big microphone, your ear. It's just sitting there waiting for someone to talk into it. That's why if you email us on how to do the tafakkur, how to do your muraqaba, how to do the, the connection, you have to be playing salawats. So when you're playing salawats it's very difficult to have waswas because you're listening to the salawats. But if you're doing anything and you say, I'm going to do my, my awrad, I'm going to do some zikr without any, anything on my ears, then if you're sensitive in that reality then know that shaitan is going to be right there at your ear and whispering. That's why I play the salawats visualize ourselves in, in a gathering where angels are praising upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and make your connection. Even when you have to get headphones to, to block out shaitan and that's why shaitan is in, is pushes people to meditate in silence. That's as if you've given a big microphone for him to start sitting down and then they sit and then they start to analyze why the job was like this and what did the people there mean by when they said this, this is all satanic. Anytime you try to analyze anything negative, know that shaitan has got you because Allah is not in need of analyzing negativity. We know shaitan is bad, it's like you want to dig it up and look at it and examine it. Imagine something foul and disgusting, you don't need to look at it, it's foul and disgusting. You don't have to pick at it and, and go through it. So it means that's not from heavens. Heavens is that they don't look to the foul and bad but they focus towards the heavens. 
that they focus on making their connection, focus on their salawats, focus on, on being in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad being in the presence of awliyaullah. So anytime we're focused into the, the dirty thing that's not from the heavens, shaitan has fooled the, the servant to come this way and focus on something bad, inshaAllah. As Salaam Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, I am severely depressed due to past relationship. I don't know how to get out of it. The doctor prescribed medications. Should I take it? But I'm afraid of getting addicted to them. Okay, you're severely depressed because of past relationships and the doctor has prescribed medications. So don't know how to get off of them. The, that's a dangerous situation inshaAllah that you know you can slowly get off of the medications for depression but you know keep always under your medical care and that's why all of the, the meditation and practices is that to cut the past. There's two ropes that shaitan is binding people is the thought of the past, what happened in the past in my life. The past is already written, whatever Allah wanted to happen nobody can escape Allah's plan. Whatever happened to you it was written, whatever happened to all of us whether it was good or bad it's the destiny that Allah wrote for us and a part of our faith is to accept whatever Allah wrote as a destiny. So then we cut the string in the past that the past is not important it is whatever Allah wrote. Now the future don't worry about because Allah will write whatever He wants to write for the future. So then this zikr of alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, alhamdulillah for whatever Allah is bestowing upon us and to feel the, the love and the, the favours that God has given. Don't focus on the bad and the past. And don't worry about the future, just live right now in the present that God gave you breath, that He gave you good health, He gave you whatever He gave you, keep saying alhamdulillah for that because it could get a lot worse. It could have many, many intense sicknesses where you don't even have the ability to be depressed, you're so sick God forbid. And then shukran lillah that Allah thank you for everything you gave Ya Rabbi and shukran, shukran Ya Rabbi, shukran and Allah said, thank me and I give you more. As soon as we have shukran then Allah inshaAllah always to increase in what the servant is asking or in need of. But first be thankful for what you do have because if you don't think that's good it can get a lot worse. So once the servant is thankful for what they have then the shukr Allah then inshaAllah bestow more upon them. But this relationship of love that the, the tariqah comes to teach is important is that you have to find the love for the Divinely Presence in the heart. That the heart has uh, no place other than the presence of Allah and the love for Sayyidina Muhammad that is the supreme love and the most important love. So we teach people how to re-love that you have to love Allah and then teach the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Every other love is going to disappoint insan and the only love that doesn't disappoint is the love of the Divinely Presence and that whom Allah loves which is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad by that being the supreme love in the heart then the connection with the Divine is correct, the connection with that energy is correct and then we begin to love others the way they are. And we accept people to the best of our ability the way they are because our love and the real love of the heart is, is set with the Divinely Presence. But unfortunately 99% of people on this earth they don't have a love for Divinely Presence and they try to make their heart with another human being to be of a Divinely nature and that's where they go wrong. They, they find somebody and try to change them and make them into something they want or something that they're looking for but that doesn't happen. Shaykhs know that the, nobody changes. So. That's how everything is set wrong, the heart has to be reset, recalibrated. That's probably why Allah wrote things to be broken 
is that you are putting the wrong and we put the wrong people into here. So this heart for Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad once that's solid and firm every other love has its own place. And we say jigar that put the, their love into your liver. That way jigarit biram is that your love on my organ but it's not in my heart. That my heart only has room for Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad And that way that love is good, the servant is correctly calibrated and Allah is happy. And with Allah happy then everything becomes blessed, everything becomes dressed with Divinely grace and Divine majesty inshaAllah. But when Allah looks to someone He loves and sees that their heart has something else in it then Allah is displeased with that, that take that out of the heart. And the heart is only the house of Allah inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I usually take my children to drive at night to put them to sleep. Is it safe to travel in the car at night or should I avoid it? I usually put my kids in the car to drive at night to put them to sleep. That can be quite a difficult task, every single night you have to put them in the car to, to drive around. But nighttime generally is a, is a difficult time. But if that's working for you then you know, then inshaAllah Allah make it an easier way for you to put your children to sleep. But nighttime has a, has a negative energy, maghrib time has a negative energy. So it, it's best to sort of discipline ourselves and condition because children are conditioned. If you condition everything about going out to fall asleep, at what point in our life do we stop that? <coughs> Because then they just get used to and conditioned to always be in the car at month of time and let's go out. And then it, it, it just keeps going and going and going. But if they're small and you condition them to sleep while you're driving in the daytime and they, they sleep and these things is, is, is good. And children and raising of children is based on conditioning. So in our training the children were to be raised with lots of noise all the time. So even when they were infants there would be television on, there would be all sorts of noise in the home so that they slept under every type of condition. We didn't create a, a sense of complete silence and then for them to sleep because the, our lives are busy. And if you condition them to only sleep when everything is completely silent, completely quiet then it's going to be a very difficult life to, to maintain that level of silence all the time. And then they, they're raised like that. So when the conditioning is to be under noise and all sorts of activities, your children will be conditioned like that and you'd be surprised that all the noise in the world and they pass out. And that way your house is always busy and they can sleep whenever they're tired, they just pass out. The noise doesn't bother them and they've been conditioned and trained that through all of the different sort of things that are happening, they sleep. InshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can I know the levels of my heart and which ones I'm entering? When I feel my heart overtaken by love, how do I know the next level? Uh, how do I know the levels of the heart and which heart that I'm entering? And <laughs> inshaAllah, get the levels of the heart book <laughs> so that you read the levels of the heart and to understand that you can't open any of them. The, the reality of the levels of the heart and all of this is based on the muraqabah. So to understand and read the knowledges of the heart is important so that you understand what are these knowledges in this house of Allah Qalbul Mu'man Baytullah. So anyone who loves Allah wants to know what's in Allah's house and that's what we call the levels of the heart in this heart. The Sahabi in this heart, the Prophets in this heart, what are the reality of the, the lights and the energies, the seasons, everything related to this house of Allah Once you study that but you should also be then making the meditation because only through the meditation and the fires the shaykh will begin to reflect the lights of that level into the servant of the hearts of the servant.
It's not a matter of entering into the level, the shaykh has to reflect those lights and those realities upon the servant. And they know when that light is coming and it doesn't happen at one, two, three, it can happen at all different levels. The lights can be coming for knowledges, the lights can be coming for the red which is the struggle and how they know it is the over, overall presentation of the student. So when they're strong in their muraqabah, strong in their tafakkur and they read those understandings only for them to understand what are the inner works of the shaykh. So when they're making their fayas and their connection because they understood and read those knowledges they understand a little bit of the work of what the shaykh's light is doing. So and every time they're making the muraqabah they may catch a glimpse of how the shaykh is sending a yellow light and that he's instilling upon the heart of the servant Divine knowledges because the qalb is the illumination of Divinely knowledges. Then he may meditate again and stronger and stronger connection and see red lights coming and those red lights from the heart of the shaykh they are again depositing the lights of struggle. So that they have the understanding of what and then in that latayat they understood what Sayyidina Umar was in the, the sirr because he was for Qudjal Haqq, for stand for truth and fight against falsehood. Sayyidina Mahdi is at that level, Sayyidina Miqail is at that level. Because you read those and when you're meditating you understand that these are the lights of struggle that are entering into the heart. So that the shaykh is sending a fayas that gives you backbone to struggle, to stand for what's truth, to stand for what's right, to come against bad character, bad desires and that becomes the light that continuously illuminating onto the servant's heart. And then white light begin to reflect onto the servant means that they're getting more and more understandings of the world of light, of malakut. And so this continuous process. But that's only happening by reflection with the connection of the shaykh, not by, by uh, seeing them themselves entering into a level, there's no entering. These are reflections in which the shaykh is sending a reflection, they see it because their strength in struggling against themselves. They feel it because these uloom and these knowledges are flowing into their heart. They are understanding what the shaykhs are talking about because these lights are reinforcing into their soul. So it's all by reflection, they don't want it as self-help where you go into your heart and you can do something because then you're not… you're going to cut everyone out, you're going to cut the shaykh out, you're going to cut Prophet out and then the people become not what Allah wanted. Allah wanted the system in which they rely upon this reality of the reflection. So that this is a reflecting reality and the oceans of perfection because they receive the reflection from their shaykhs all the way up to the reflection from Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi. Uh, I'm afraid of taking medications also, I fear will they cut spiritual sensitivities? I fear taking medications also and will they cut sensitivities? Yes. Yeah, Wh who's also? Did somebody uh, say that they were scared of meditation, you were medications? You were answering a previous question about depression and medication. Oh, the previous question, okay. Yeah, the medication, when they take too much medication and they have to do their spiritual practices and try to do, you know, whatever they can do and hopefully the doctor can ease on depression. Depression is something that they have to work and, and try to resolve. Uh, mental illness is not, they're not the same at all. So anybody suffering from paranoia, schizophrenia, bipolar, these are things that you require medication because your neurotransmitters are not transmitting correctly and that can be very dangerous and that doesn't mix well with spirituality. So those things it's like you know heart medicine, diabetes, you take your medicine and if Allah wants to cure you from it, alhamdulillah and if Allah doesn't then He teaches you how to live with it. 
and you live with the defect and the, the, the difficulty on the physicality as well as you do the spiritual practices and, and the practices that you have to do. But to not take medication at all is extremely dangerous and it can't be fixed by spirituality because we said the three prongs, the mind, the body and the soul have to be working for this to be a balanced practice. If the mind is off then the body and the soul is not going to reach what it has to reach because the mind is not there then the person wants to jump out the window every time they have a spiritual experience. If they don't take care of their body and then their mind and soul is meditating but their body is, is infected with uh, all sorts of problems it's impossible to meditate. So Allah wants all three of them to be balanced and taken care of inshaAllah. So when they take care of the medicine and you find the medicine that works with you and then you try a different one until you know you get the, a, a place where you're able to function and, and that you, you can comfortably sort of coexist with that uh, sickness or that disease or that difficulty inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What are all the ways that shaitan enter inside us and how can we know that we got rid of shaitan inside? You can't get rid of shaitan. How do we know all the ways that shaitan enters within us and how do we know that we got rid of shaitan? You, you can't get rid of shaitan. That, that's, a, that's a very, very different level. So the shaitan enters from every way, that's all we have to understand. Negativity is everywhere but the most important is to build the positive, build the connection, build all the energies <coughs> when the overwhelming positive energies are flowing then the shayateen and negative energies find it much more difficult to get near the servant. When they emanate with tremendous lights and tremendous blessings they stay further away, farther away. So it's important to focus on the connection, focus on making the connection, focus on all, all of the practices inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata amma yathifoon wa salaamun al mursaleem. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ila Shaykh al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sahbihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqat al-Nashbandiyyat al-Mu'adiyya wa sayyidu sadatina sadaqeena al-Fatiha